am the assistant superintendent of uh, Opportunity Gaps in the Boston Public Schools, which kind of means uh, everything equity in, in, in BPS, right? From the policies and practices in central office down to the student level. Unless we're intentional about talking about racial equity and then, you know, the intersectional conversations off of that around poverty and, you know, um, other isms out there, then we're not going to get at the root cause of, of why things look the, the way they do in all of our systems and specifically our, our education system. Quite often students, and depending on the age, will say things like, oh, this place is racist or, you know, and then you have to try to start unpacking with the students what they mean by that. And, and you know, the sad part is maybe it's one, just one experience, or maybe it's an experience they feel every day, but they're holding on to that, and that's how they feel about their building. So if, if, the, if the school's not being responsive, but also reflective in adding in kind of student voice, family voice into, into how they do their business, then they're, in some ways, they're purposely blind to how the kids feel. Our view of cultural proficiency isn't just that folks understand the populations that they're working with and, and, and can adapt their practices to them, but at the end of the day, that they're comfortable enough to talk about societal issues so that our students, our kids who are in K-12 can craft a better, society, more equitable society. The McCormick is located in Dorchester, um, which is the most diverse, most populated neighborhood in the city of Boston. There are challenges that are really specific to being a young person of color in the city of Boston um, that make the day-to-day -day of school really hard for some kids. And, and those are the kids in my classroom, right? So if I'm not talking about race and the way the race that race is affecting them and affecting their families, then I'm just like, I'm being blind to the very real issues that we're all struggling with. And that, that just doesn't feel right as a teacher. Like my job is to help kids make sense of what's happening in the world, not to pretend that what's happening in the world isn't happening. Part of what I'm trying to do in this unit is teach kids stories of black history that they haven't learned before and show kids people thriving, people pushing back, people resisting and succeeding, even in difficult contexts. I think that the narratives that we teach around um, race in America often try to gloss over the hard stuff that history still affects everything that is happening in our country right now. Kids were both able to see like, wow, this is really deep history. Like, wow, this, this existed and it was so powerful and it's so meaningful and also to think about like, yeah, why haven't we learned it before? My personal mission in my current job, I see myself as somewhat of an innovator. So how can we create innovative practices towards uh, for marginalized students? For every victory that you see in a school, and, and uh, you, you quite often see a couple of things that are very troubling. So how do you then speak to that school in a way that they can start taking a look at that and deconstruct what they built. How do we try to minimize the harm that a system can do while you're trying to innovate and, and talk about like this is a better way of doing it? How do you flip it and say all kids deserve high rigor, responsive curriculum, pedagogy in a school that takes them as a whole child um, and has access points for all students? We created a model uh, called EFA, Excellence for All, that has really five pillars. It is around rigorous, culturally relevant, CLSP-aligned instruction, uh, strong social-emotional learning. That is, that has a racial lens to it. You know, high-quality enrichments. Without the coaching and the talent of the coaches who have strong racial equity lenses, we don't get to some of the results that we're seeing in that program and some of the changes we're seeing in some of those buildings uh, for higher rigor, more responsive education for the kids. You're talking about hundreds of years um, of oppression that we're, we're trying to deal with. But I think we're on a path. And the places that still struggle, like there's at least, you know, there, there is conversation around that place is struggling for these reasons. Now, what are we going to do about it? Um, and, and that's where the rubber meets the road. And, and hopefully, you know, our, our team is pushing folks um, and helping folks have the language to have that courage. If we have any chance, then our adults in our buildings need to be aware, comfortable talking about racial equity and then be able to embed that into some of their practices. Um, you know, I think that would, I think, give us more hope as a country and, and, and hopefully uh, building a more just society.